Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for your Monday, April 6th, 2020. Please keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this is a reading dated for the 26th, I'm sorry, for the 6th of March. Why did I want to say, what the hell? I'm sorry. <laughs> Just because this is dated for the 6th of March, that does not mean that it absolutely has to resonate. Not March. Oh my God, Eric, get it together. Just because this is dated for the 6th of April, it doesn't mean that it has to resonate for you at that time. Just because, um, uh, or uh, whenever you are guided to watch this reading and it resonates for you, then that is the message for you in that moment. Also keep in mind that, that this is a general reading, so please keep take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Oh my goodness, you guys, I'm so sorry. I am fumbling all over my words today. I have, I mean, this is the second time that I'm trying this again because at first I was getting the date all wrong and then I realized I wasn't wearing my necklaces and so I had to just, I was just like, you know what, Eric, let's just start over. <laughs> so <laughs> that's where we are today, kids, okay? Um, so I was able to do a Twin Flame reading yesterday, Sunday, that was released yesterday. There is a card at the top right of your screen, Z, um, where you can find that if you want to check it out when you're done here with this reading. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys had a good weekend. Um, yeah, I hope you had a good weekend. I mean, I had a pretty okay weekend, I guess. It, I mean, it was quite uneventful, other than the fact that I've been packing. So as some of you know, I am in the process of moving. I was able to get a lot of packing done this weekend. Um, and while I was packing, uh, well, I went through my closet and I got most of that stuff out of there and I found this deck. Um, and I actually, I found this deck a few days ago. I was just going through my closet and I was like, oh wow, you know, I've never used this deck before. Um, it is the Fairy Tarot by Doreen Virtue and Radley Valentine. Um, I, this was one of the very first decks that I bought way back when, when I was learning to read and I was exploring different types of cards and different themes and all that. And um, I never actually used it. Um, and not even in like in my personal life, even when I was, before I started the channel, I never used it. And so now um, I have it here and I've been looking for cards to use for morning coffee. And as you guys also know, I'm getting back into the tarot here, which is great. Um, one of the reasons why I switched over to Oracle so, so hard was because I was really, I was getting very bored with the tarot. Um, but, you know, now that I'm having to simplify things and, and whatnot, because I'm moving, I'm getting back into Tarot. And actually, I really do enjoy it because I found that, you know, while I was able to channel messages for people with the Oracle cards, um, I, I have a stronger time channeling. I get much more specific messages with the Tarot. And so I'm very happy to be moving back into that just because it feels natural. You know, I, that, it's what I started with. It's what I've always wanted to read and work with. You know, Oracle cards was just kind of like an afterthought, you know, once I really got into the, to the Tarot community. So very happy to be pulling it back to Tarot here for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this deck. I'm going to get our overall theme very much like I used to do um, way back when before I started using, I mean, it's really not even that long ago. It's like li literally like less than a month ago, maybe a month. Anyway, um, start <laughs> getting our overall messages from here. And then I'll go into uh, some other tarot decks to get some deeper clarification. Yeah. Okay. I got to pause for a second. Okay, we're back. Sorry about that. All right, let's do this. All right, so we're just going to get straight into it. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Monday, April 6th, 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, kids. We're going to have this three shuffles, and then we'll see what we've got for the day, yeah? Let's see. One. You, you always know a new deck 
because it's pretty difficult to shuffle. And these tech, these cards are pretty big and they're pretty thick. Um, so you're gonna have to bear with me on this one. <laughs> Two. All right, for the collective. What have we got going on for the collective today, please spirit? And three, what do you wanna discuss with us today, please spirit? For the collective today, daily reading, Monday, April 6th and beyond. Okay, so first two cards out face up are balance and the 10 of summer. Balance would be the, uh, would be temperance. 10 of summer is the 10 of cups. Okay, so already what I'm feeling here is either there is a need to get balanced in terms of what it is you truly want, the 10 of summer or the 10 of cups, what would be your ultimate wish fulfillment? I do, I do feel like this has to do with love for some of you, okay? And for others of you, this is about being in balance. I, whether you're in this balance or whether you're needing to find this balance, I feel like that is the, the, the main focus right now. I'm so sorry, guys. Give me a second. I need some lotion for my hands. Um, cause, cause Abby's ashy. And we can't be having no ashiness up in here. Mm -mm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. But um, it's a necessity. That's what I'm hearing. And I, and I feel like what you understand is that this is a necessity. And it's interesting because I just kind of reached this energy yesterday and today. After I did the Twin Flame reading yesterday, um, uh, I fell into a little bit of a depression. I'm not going to lie. Um the twin flame energies had been kind of bugging me ever since Friday, Thursday or Friday, um, a few days before I got to the twin flame reading. Um, and, and, and it bugged me pretty hard. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Like sat Friday. I was a Friday. What, there was a day last week close to when I did that reading that I was like, I was, I, I, I it was almost incapacitated like it was unbearable it was just like the the emotion and the purging that was happening but after i did the reading yesterday you know i settled in i meditated for a good two hours because there was a deep sense of guilt and shame that was coming through and i was humbling myself and and sitting back and saying okay well if there's something that i need to repent for i guess the word would be then i'm showing up for it because i'm i don't want to i'm tired of this shit <laughs> basically but after that you know I, I kind of felt a little better but then by the time i woke up this morning my energy was totally different i was back into that happy go lucky vibe i was back in that high vibe type energy that the, i guess you could call it, i wanted to say fearless energy um just very happy with being me, being in my skin, being who I am, being proud of who I am. Um, and that's kind of been my lesson or my, my main focus this morning, remaining in that sense of happiness, contentment, joy, euphoria, just being happy for the sake of happiness. What I'm getting with the Ten of Summer or at least the Ten of Cups Ten of Summer is the Ten of Cups. But what I'm getting from this is like, regardless of whether you have a relationship, the ideal relationship or your ideal living situation or your ideal job or that ideal circumstance that will bring you that emotional fulfillment, it the, the, the Ten of Cups is about being happy just because you're happy or being happy just because you feel that connection to source, God, creator, all that is. You feel that abundant flow. You just feel that euphoria, that exuberance, the... The, 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 the childlike happiness here, okay? And so this is the focus. This is the focus for us right now. Whether we are struggling to get into this, this energy or whether we are, I don't even wanna use the word struggling. Whether we are working on getting into that energy or whether we're actually in that energy and working on maintaining it. That is the, That is the um, <clears throat> the main theme here. We have the Two of Spring, which is the Two of Wands, the Four of Summer, which is the Four of Cups, and Justice, which is, ooh, look. Y'all, while, <laughs> while I was in this energy yesterday, I did um, a reading for myself, and Justice just kept coming out for me. And... 
again, as you guys know, I'm moving. I'm in the process of moving. And there was even a moment yesterday where I was starting to doubt whether or not me making this move was even right for me. But with this whole energy of, especially within the Twin Flame Collective, of needing to choose yourself, needing to do what is right for you, needing to stop giving all your power away to those that just want to use you, um, I, I had to make the decision to go in the place or move in the direction, go in the direction that is actually much better, much better for me health wise. It's not even a circumstance. And it's, what's, it's like where I'm just being super selfish and I want to go here. So I'm going to go there. No, I am being selfish, but I'm being selfish in ways and saying, look, this is actually going to be much better for me holistically, mind, body, spirit. It's going to be better for me for the channel. It's going to be better for me in so many different ways. And here we have justice yet again okay but you have justice with the four of cups and the two of wands so it seems that there is some sort of missed opportunity here that you're dealing with um it could it could be a love offer that was not taken it could be um a circumstance or 11 11 a circumstance or a situation that fell through that didn't turn out the way you had expected didn't turn out the way you had wanted and i feel like for some of you this is something um this is not romantic in nature, and it's something that you have been preparing for. I feel like it might have been a career hope, um, a creative idea, a creative goal. Something just didn't quite work out the way it was meant to or the way it was intended. Um, and there's a choice that you need to make here. Or I feel, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like this choice has already been made with the two of wands. Um, the Four of Cups, but justice is here, okay? And what I feel like this is saying, especially with Temperance and the Ten of Summer, whatever whatever this is for you, whatever this circumstance is, unrequited love is what I just heard, okay? Um, <clears throat> something that fell through, something that didn't go the way you wanted it to, um, some sort of boredom, yeah. I'm sorry, I was just reading what the card said, but this... The advent of this, okay, whatever this Four of Cups represents for you, caused you to make a choice, Two of Wands or Two of Spring, that ultimately, and you may not see it right now, but it's bringing justice into your life. And it's brought you to a greater sense of balance in terms of what it is you really want, truly want in life, what's going to be emotionally fulfilling for you, Ten of Cups, um, or at least it's helped you... It's helped you get greater definition on it, or it's helped you. There was something else I wanted to say, and now I've lost it. Ultimately, whatever happened here helped you get greater balance here, helped you understand or recognize what it is you truly want, or as, as a... Um, a direct result of this missed opportunity, we'll call it, that caused you to make a decision that's ultimately bringing justice in your life. You're now here with this temperance balance energy with the 10 of cups and saying, okay, how do I get what I want here? All right. Underneath the deck, we have the seven of cups. Exactly. Seven of summer, seven of cups. How do I get what I want here? There is a good amount of confusion. You're not quite understanding why this has happened the way it has happened. But ultimately, let me tell you, whether you're seeing it clearly, consciously or not, there is a strong sense of justice underlying this situation. Okay? Ultimately, uh, justice is being served. Karma is being paid, I guess. Ugh, I don't really want to take it there. But first, in, I guess I have to. In some cases, that's exactly what's going on. So, okay. All right. So um, let's start going a little deeper here. This is, I'm using the Crystal Visions Tarot today. So let's talk about the Four of Summer. One more shuffle. I'm going to be honest. For a lot of you, this four of summer energy doesn't feel like you're wallowing in this pity, self-pity or this, this energy any longer. 
and maybe you just came out of it. Maybe you finally were able to pull yourself out of it. I just feel like this four of summer or this four of cups energy is very much a past energy that may have been working its way out of your life or out of your system for quite a long time or it's just something that you really had to work on letting go of but ultimately that is why you find yourself here with temperance and the ten of cups it's almost as if everything is fine the way it is okay well we have the page of wands in reverse with the four of pentacles and the eight of pentacles so it seems someone did not want to re-identify themselves, or at least someone did not want to send a message, be truthful, be honest about their feelings. Um, someone may have given up on a creative project. Someone may have bailed on you if you were in a te team situation. But ultimately what I'm getting from that is because they were unable to change their point of view. They were under unable to see it a different way. They were unable to let go of something. Eight of Pentacles is here now with the sun, though. Okay, ultimately, though, that caused someone else, most likely you, I'm going to say the person that's watching this reading right now, it caused you or whomever to really do some work here. And I get with this Eight of Pentacles, this is internal work, at which at, with the sun at the bottom of the deck, um, again, this is giving me feeling that feeling like everything is okay. It may have been a situation where you, for a long time, you were really um, upset about it. Uh, you were really, I don't know, it, 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 <laughs> Spirit just said, in some dire straits over it. Okay. Um, but it brought illumination to you. It, it, un it helped you understand what work you could do to clean up your side of the street, I guess we could say. All right. Okay, so uh, l let's go to justice then. Why is justice here? Why is justice here, please, spirit? Knight of Wands. So moving up, um, I'm hearing a passionate new beginning. Yeah, look, with the Ace of Cups. What I'm getting with the Knight of Wands is there is an energy of you or someone getting into this place of unconditionally loving yourself. Ace of Cups, finding... And it's it's interesting because often the Four of Cups or the Four of, in this deck it's the Four of Summer, but often the Four of Cups is depicted as someone sitting under a tree with three cups lined up in front of them. This is at least a traditional way of depicting it with another cup being handed to this individual straight from the hand of God or the universe, however you want to see it. And here is that cup right here. And what I'm picking up on with in terms of justice is that instead of trying to hand this cup to somebody else you kind of took it as your own you looked into it and recognized the love and the care and the appreciation and the encouragement that was coming through this loving energy from the universe from the divine and that has set you off in motion in a truer dire in a direction that i feel like you're very passionate about you're either very passionate about it or you're pa <laughs> or at least you're passionate about getting a getting the fuck away from whatever it is you're get you're you're leaving behind okay let's look a little deeper into this knight of wands energy please spirit what else can you tell us about this knight of wands oh my goodness well, you definitely are moving towards your a greater, deeper sense of happiness. You have the Ten of Cups here with the Knight of Cups in reverse and the Nine of Cups in reverse. That's really interesting. Spirit keeps saying to turn these upright. I, I get it. Okay, Spirit is saying to turn the knight, and the knight of Cups and the Nine of Cups upright. However, they came out reversed for a reason. I'm trying to understand what that is. I'm trying to put it into perspective before I turn it over. You do have the devil at the bottom of the deck. Okay, so whatever it... I, I, I mean, I kind of almost... I almost want to say this Knight of Wands energy is running away from something. Uh, that's kind of the, the feeling that I get from it. Um... 
but I'm what I'm hearing is you're running from rougher waters to calmer waters, a very six of swords energy, okay? Um, and you may be, you may very well be running away from something. And but in this case, I don't feel that phrase is a bad thing to say because you have, yeah, you have the devil with the seven of wands and the eight, ooh, and the eight of wands and the sun at the bottom of the deck. Yeah, someone is definitely running the fuck away from some really nasty, toxic, narcissistic bullshit. Because you have the illumination here and you have with the sun and then you also have with the ten of pentacles that was underneath the sun, you have a lesson learned. You have a completion of a cycle. And then underneath that ten of pentacles is the self-mastery, the work, the three of pentacles, that work that you were doing on rebuilding or reshaping yourself in the face of all of this, okay? So while the knight of cups and the nine of cups are in reverse here, this is that past energy. So the nine of cups is that wish that never was fulfilled, that dream that never came true. The Knight of Cups in reverse is an, a love offer that was not off, uh, accepted, um, uh, an offer of care, compassion, love, creativity, maybe even some sort of service was not, was not accepted or was not reciprocated. Even with this Knight of Cups energy, I'm picking up on a narcissistic individual or person or situation, someone that, that, that is really only focused on their own emotional well-being or their own emotional fulfillment and is not really looking to provide to others in any sort of way. Um, very much a, give, a, a taker, um, emotionally selfish, maybe even emotionally mature, emotionally immature, emotionally stunted. But that's what you're running away from. That is what you're moving away from. Because notice, you have the Knight of Wands, which is a very fast-moving card. Yes, very passionate card, too. And the Ten of Cups. Both of these are upright. And yet, the Nine and the Knight are reversed. Because this is what you're moving away from. And now I do want to turn this upright. Because ultimately, you moving in this direction and running away or moving away from this toxic energy, keeping your defenses up with the, <laughs> with the path quite clear in front of you, Okay, the devil, the seven of wands, and the eight of wands. Ultimately, this is going to find you. The right circumstance, the right individual, the right... Let's just say it this way. Justice is being served. There you go. Justice is being served. So yes, if you are in still an energy of, and we're going to talk about that right now, actually, but if you're still in an energy of questioning whether you've made the right decision to go in this direction, you absolutely have. But let's talk about that. Two of spring, two of, two of wands. All right, let's talk about this decision. What can we say about this two of spring here, please, spirit? Four of swords. Okay. Um, I do think you took a lot of time to think about this. You may still need to rest and meditate again, because you have made the right decision. Four of cups. There's that four of cups again. But I really like the way the four of cups is depicted in this deck because in it, normally, normally you have the individual in this, on this card focused on the three cups rather than that ace of cups, that one cup, that singular cup that's being hand it to them. But in this deck, this individual is more focused on that ace of cups rather than the other three. The other three are just a distraction. A just a distraction from the true love that is within you, okay? Two, the two, okay, so with this decision that you made, if it really does feel like you've made the right decision, guys, because you took some time to rest and to meditate on it, to really think about it. This was not, even though you have the Knight of Wands here now at this point, the, the energy that was utilized to make this decision was not the flighty, fly by the seat of your pants energy of the Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands is the activation, activating energy or the, 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 the motivating energy to get you moving forward. You made this decision from a very conscious point of view. You sat down, you thought about it. You probably thought maybe a little too much about it. You know, kept yourself in the situation for longer than was actually really necessary because you were, you were concerned about whether you were making the right decision or not. But ultimately, this focus on the self, Ace of Cups, what's best for you is causing you to move in this direction. Yep, look at that, the Ace of Wands. There's the choice. 
do I, there, there's the wand that you chose as opposed to the other wand, which is giving yourself away to others that really don't accept or deserve you. Let's look a little deeper though. Four of swords, four of cups. I mean, this that's two fours right here. All right. So that's balance. That's grounding. That's stability. Foundation even. Yeah. All right. Well, there's the anxiety. Nine of swords. The chariot with the empress. The empress is in reverse. Okay. All right. Well, this is a lack of self-belief. This is uh, this is a feeling of not being abundant enough. This is even feeling like you're not, especially if you're of the divine feminine um, collective and you're in the process of like really leaving your divine masculine or your twin flame behind, you might feel, you might have these moments of feeling like you're not being the empress that you are meant to be, but actually you absolutely are. You absolutely are. Eight of Wands. Okay, you absolutely are being... I want to talk a little bit more about that because, ooh, that feels really deep and really heavy. You really are being the Empress that you're meant to be. Yes, the Empress can be quite enabling. Okay, I get that. <clears throat> but she doesn't have to be. And there is an energy of retracting... Uh, retracting or pulling your energy back from, again, sources that would just use you and abuse you and take you for granted. And that's not what we're after here. Okay, actually, yeah, I don't want to use this one. I want to use this one. Um, but for others of you, if this is not a twin flame thing, for others of you, this is you feeling a lack of abundance here as you move forward. Fearing that you won't be provided for by the universe, fearing that the universe isn't going to catch you as you take this leap of faith. But that's literally just a fear but i want to look a little deeper here and i want to talk about the empress in reverse i want to get to the bottom of why someone feels a lack of abundance a disconnection from source or like you're not actually living in your your true divine feminine essence why is this by making a decision that's right for yourself there's no reason to feel unjustified in that Especially if you've, if over this, all of this time, or at least this time period where you were learning this lesson or completing this cycle, if you had been that person that just kept giving of yourself and not really receiving back what you know you should, of course you're making the right decision by choosing you. Especially if you want to be a provider, if you want to be someone that's there for others, you have to be there for yourself first. So there's no reason to feel as if you're not still unconditionally loving. If you're going to be unconditionally loving to others, you have to be lo unconditionally loving to yourself too, which means giving yourself the time and the space that you need to heal and fortify and remain balanced and happy. You know, finding that ha sense of happiness and balance within instead of ex uh, requiring external circumstances to provide that to you. And the main, re the main way you do that is you stop giving all your power away to external circumstances and start using that power for your own well-being. One more shuffle, and then we'll talk about this Empress in the reverse some more. Okay, so why is the Empress in reverse here? Look, I told you, moving from rough waters to calmer waters, six of swords, all right, with the two of wands and the four of pentacles. Uh, oh boy, death is at the bottom of the deck. All right, so this four of pentacles is definitely an energy of still holding on to something that's trying to fall away. Why is the four of pentacles here? What is this for, Pentacles? Strength, pride, and ego. Interesting. Well, <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, guys, come on. All right, look. <laughs> 
We're going to talk about that in a second. But we have the chariot again with the nine of cups and the star. Look. All right. Look. Look. Okay. If this isn't enough for you to look at this, to, 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 to look at this choice, to look at this decision that you've made, to have the strength, enough strength to let go of something you've been holding on to for the longest time and to let it die out with the death card that was at the bottom of the deck, move forward. Okay. Whether you're move, literally moving or not, like energetically, physically, whatever, move forward. You're balanced, you're harmonious, you're in the flow of yourself, you're doing what is right for you, and you have both cards of wish fulfillment, the Nine of Cups and the Star. But then with the Star added onto this, this is like some added extra healing that maybe you weren't even expecting. I mean, things turning out better, way better than you could have ever imagined. But you had to let go of this first. Look at what's under the, neck, the deck. Nine of Swords, Ten of Swords, the Hanged Man, the Four of Swords, the Ace of Cups, the King of Swords, Judgment. Let's break this down. Nine of Swords. Oh God, I don't know if I should do this. Uh, is this really over? I can't believe it's over. Ten of Swords, completion, done. Last, the, that last, that tenth sword has pierced your back and now you are dead, dead, and very, very dead or at least the circumstance is, right? But you've gained some sort of change in perspective. The hanged man, through this really tough situation, right? Something that you felt like you were stuck in for a very long time. You rested, you meditated, you got some guidance, you went within, you found a sense of inner love. Ace of Cups, again. And you made a decision that you were called to make. King of Swords with justice. I'm um, not justice, judgment, but damn well, justice is right here. All right? Judgment. Look, King of Swords says, honey, let's just call a spade a spade. If this ain't working, then cut your losses and move on and maintain your balance. Maintain your balance. Be patient. Temperance with the Ten of Cups. This is what you're moving towards. So yes, of course you've made the right decision. I mean, guys, the chariot, the nine of cups and the star. All right, so you don't exactly know where it is you're going right now or how it is you're gonna get there or how long it's gonna take, but you're on your way. You damn sure are you're on your way. Look at this, the chariot, the eight of wands. This is some fast ass moving energy. Oh, right, with the knight of wands too? Honey, you are on your way. Don't fight it. Don't stop now. Shit. <laughs> I know you better not stop now. You out of your freaking mind? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> mm. Okay. Okay, cute. I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. Yeah, let's get some... Let's go to the Golden Universal Tarot here. And let's just get some closing... Tarot Guidance, and then I'm going to close out the reading with something from the Sacred or Rebels Oracle, yeah? All right. Two more shuffles here. Okay. So, closing Golden Universal Tarot Guidance, please, Spirit. Closing message for us. Closing message for us, please, Spirit. Well, well, well. None other than the Hermit. Hi, Virgo. Oh, with the Five of Cups. Good God and the lovers. Okay. With the Hierophant at the bottom of the deck. So, look. This is teaching you something. There is something for you to learn here. The Hierophant in this situation is representing teaching and learning. It's representing a very masculine energy. I'm not talking about the patriarchy, but I'm talking about the discipline, the, the disciplinarianism of, is that even a word? Of the, of the masculine. It's what I'm picking up on here. 
There is, oh my goodness, with that Ace of Cups at the bottom. Wow, you guys, look, there is something to learn here. And it's how to love yourself. The Hermit. The Hermit is a lone figure. Someone that walks their own path quite often for a, a long time. Following their own light, following their own inner guidance, getting to know themselves. Going deep within. Doing that deep excavation. Doing that deep self-work. Okay, yeah, there's a lot of sorrow. There's a lot of heartbreak. Even fear, regret, remorse, and shame. But ultimately... You have a choice. You always, you always have a choice. All right. And if this is, if, <laughs> sorry guys, if this is a twin flame situation and we'll say the masculine has always made his own choices, then damn it, girl. Hold on. Where is she? Where is she? Damn it, girl. Why can't you make choices for yourself? Why? He can do it. She can do it. And if you're on the masculine side and the feminine is the one that's been always making choices for herself and leaving you in the dust, bro, make a damn choice for your own self now. And if it leaves that person in the dust, then so be it. That's their justice. That's you. Excuse me. No, that's your justice. 555 five, five on the counter. That's your justice. Leave it alone. Let it be. Let bygones be bygones and move on in your own direction. Make the choice that is right for you. But you see, I feel like you've already made it. Where was that ace? Where was that ace of cups? Didn't the ace of cups show up again? Oh yeah, it's right here. Learning to love yourself. This doesn't have to be about love, you guys. This can be a, I, I am feeling like this is a, for some of you, this is, I am feel, picking up on a creative project, some sort of team effort that maybe just isn't going well or isn't going in the, in the, in the right direction. There could be some individuals that are, in, that are associated with this that are very selfish, very creatively selfish, very ego-driven, very power-hungry, very fame-hungry. I'm kind of picking up on an energy of certain individuals that really don't want to do that much work or actually don't have much of a hand in the creative process trying to claim ownership disgusting let's close out the reading here with your oracle guidance from the sacred rebels who are you and what do you want from my life? I knew, I, you see, I knew it. I knew it, anyway. Sorry, that's my roommate. Okay, um, we're gonna get your closing guidance now. But it's funny because before I started the reading, I was like, um, I, it's, I really don't think anyone, should be texting me right now, but I feel like I should put my phone on vibrate. And sure enough, boop, there goes the text. All right, one last shuffle. And let's get your closing oracle guidance for this reading. There it is. Card number 11, diving for light. Sorry, I'm, I feel like I'm off-center today. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Hey, look. Look. Enough out of you. <laughs> anyway, diving for light. How brave you are. You are diving for light. It can be so much simpler to seek light in the heavenly, in that which is blissful, sweet, loving, and kind. To look for the light in that which is dark is an advanced task that only a rebellious and brave heart will attempt. You may not feel that you have taken such a journey by choice, yet you have taken this wise challenge on from, a deep, from deep within your soul. The innermost being has evoked this situation in your life with the intention that you grow in power, wisdom, and creative juice. It also wants you to experience a bold and fearless trust, fearless trust in life and become further empowered to live it with zest and courage. 
The Oracle of Divine, oh, I'm sorry, the Oracle of Diving for Light speaks of a time when you are called into darkness through life circumstances, situations, relationship challenges, or inner struggles that defy clear understanding. The darkness might be a creative block, a sense of being in a, in a void, or feelings of depression, rage, sadness, fear, or anxiety. There may or may not be an obvious cause. The darkness might be generally accepted and socially acknowledged because there is a socially acceptable or obvious reason for it, such as a death, divorce, or, reta or retrenchment. However, there may, no, there may be no obvious justification for your experience of darkness. You might, need a, you might not need a reason to be able to accept it. Likewise, you may struggle to find an unconditional acceptance of your experience. Just know that you are actually on track and right where you need to be. Mm. I'm not going to read all of this. This oracle brings particular guidance that although you are powerful, you are also vulnerable at this time. You need to be able to, you need to be alert to sabotage and criticism that may make your progress more difficult than it already is. That would be rather unnecessary. At least some of the people around you might be more attached to their fear and doubt. Wait, I'm sorry. At least some of the people around you might be more attached to their fear and doubt than to their faith in your process and the ways of the creative, rebellious, spiritual path that asks us to trust unconditionally. They may be frightened due to a lack of understanding. You don't need to carry their fear for them. You have your own process to attend to, and they can choose to be inspired by your journey or frightened by it. They are free to respond as they wish, and whatever they, those responses are, they are part of their journey for them to walk through. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. There you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, if you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. I don't know why I feel felt compelled to say that, but if anyone out there is looking for a private reading, I am available for that now. Um, so hit me up. Yeah. But with that said, I hope you guys have a great day and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading tomorrow morning. Yeah. Take care. Bye.